My name is Henrike Lode. I came from uh, Berlin, Germany, where I studied media uh, and computing. So I learned to become a programmer, although I never really set out to become one. It was kind of accidental. And I was a tutor too, so I taught some other kids programming. So uh, I learned a lot about learning when I learned programming. That was a very um, good experience for me. The idea developed over years before that I wanted to make a game that teaches programming, uh, or that I thought, when I was a tutor at my old university in Berlin, I um, had some troubles explaining things to students because programming concepts are very abstract and there's nothing in real life we can compare them to. But um, you can just find an image that is close to it. I was thinking of um, having some kind of a restaurant scenario where you have, to, you have different variables, so you mix different ingredients together to cook the perfect meal. It's like a formula, trying to take different pieces of a um, uh, formula to create the perfect uh, recipe and uh, cooking works very similar than the programming in one sense. You have the recipe you have to follow, you have conditions, I have to stir this until it reaches a certain consistency and then uh, I have to cook it until it's uh, so many degrees hot or something like that and um, that would just make it so much easier to explain it to other people. The problem is that most people who teach programming have been teaching it for so long and have been knowing it for so long that they forgot how it's like not to know programming. So um, uh, yeah, I was looking for good metaphors to explain this very abstract science. This game is called Machineers. It's a 2D puzzle adventure uh, for kids from 10 to 14 and puzzle gamers of all ages. And um, uh, it's teaching uh, procedural literacy and programming concepts in a very uh, intuitive way. Uh, because we mapped all the learning content to uh, be represented by um, different machine parts and wrap it all up in a story um, with where this apprentice Zola who starts her first day is in this machineer workshop you have to repair machines and earn yourself a reputation and learn a lot about how machines are built up. You as a person, as a programmer, are an engineer. You build things, you repair things. You look at them and their logic and try to find out how the insides work. And um, the second metaphor is uh, that the programs are machines. And the third metaphor is that you build machines that travel so you can um, have your learning journey. You become more, um, yeah, you become better at the job and um, travel along uh, on your goal to become, no, yeah, you can't really reach the goal. You always, it's always a learning process, a learning journey. It's just yeah, using vehicles, traveling, which is not in the game yet, but uh, we're gonna develop it some more and then we're gonna start building vehicles <laughs> in the game. With, and you yeah, become um, kind of famous in this world. The more you learn, the more you repair. What we're trying to do is uh, we're using the stealth learning approach because uh, we've been doing a lot of testing with um, the kids from Copenhagen International School during the development. And once we said, um, we're making this educational game, we're trying to make learning fun and we're just trying to evaluate the game, so please tell us what's wrong with it. We're not evaluating you. And one kid reacted very strongly to this, that it's a learning game and complained about the graphics and why are there robots and what, what, what is this supposed to teach me? What am I learning here? And uh, he just felt cheated. Somebody named this the chocolate covered broccoli. It's like, I can see it's a broccoli, you know? I can see there's just some coating on it. And I said, well, we're trying to change the way learning works. We're trying to make learning fun. And he said to me, learning will never be fun very strongly convinced. So we decided we're not going to tell anyone that this is a learning game. We're just going to say it's a puzzle adventure and they're not going to be thrown off by their aversion to learning. Well, uh, the next step is going to be that we're going to develop uh, one more world that's similar to the one that we have right now. We're going to develop the vehicle workshop uh, as features and we're going to target the iPad platform because um, we're trying to reach kids and uh, uh, most of them don't own Steam, probably. I mean, like, uh, I'm very new to this business world. I don't really know um, how things work with selling things. I've never made a game that I wanted to sell before. Now this is important because, um, I mean, uh, it is just for the greater good of the people, but uh, I need to survive, I need to make a salary, so I need to sell this product. And uh, 
Yeah, so we decided um, touch devices are really uh, good for this because we're only using mouse controls right now. It's very intuitive to only uh, to, to map it to touch devices. And uh, uh, parents uh, own iPads, or uh, at least more than computers uh, partly, and they see them as something beneficial for education because um, they can more be closer to their kids while they play, they can see what they're doing. And um, I'm not even sure if there's any scientific research that proves that iPads work better for education than computers, but um, I think, yeah, it's uh, the way we're gonna go with this game in the future.